my name is uh, Matusz Kapusta. I am uh, with Innovatrix for more than 10 years. And uh, when I joined the company, uh, it was a young team of uh, 10 people. One of the first projects we did together was mentioned here. Uh, it was in Indonesia uh, eight years ago. And uh, my focus domain is mostly ABIS. And during this session, I would like to uh, explain you about what is new in uh, our ABIS 7, but of course I will summarize the key feature of ABIS and uh, uh, I will also present something that we are cooking just right now and we plan to release in uh, maybe version 8 in 2019 or early 2020. So uh, I don't know how many of you uh, know what ABIS is. Uh, I suppose that uh, most of you are familiar uh, with ABIS as a product, but uh, I will uh, briefly explain that ABIS is actually not an uh, innovatrix trademark. Uh, ABIS is an acronym which stands for uh, Automated Biometric Identification System. Uh, it's uh, quite uh, self-explanatory. So uh, usually we need an ABIS uh, when we want to do a biometric uh, identification, and we call it system, because uh, uh, we are talking about the large scale. So we don't need an ABIS if we want to uh, do an identification of 1 to 1,000 uh, in the TEM and attendance system. But uh, when we are talking about large scale, usually uh, we are talking about uh, 100,000 up to, up to 100 uh, million and even more. So, um, currently, uh, we can uh, split uh, our focus, uh, our field focus on three different uh, domain. Uh, where we have started uh, a long time ago, and our first uh, field experience is uh, government ABIS or, or civil, civil ABIS. Uh, when this ABIS is deployed, is usually when we want to create a national register uh, for population. And why we need this? Because uh, we want to provide a, a trusted identity. Uh, so we want to uh, create a trust so that uh, if somebody is uh, uh, using an ID, we can trust that ID. Um, another use case uh, is action process. Um, especially in African countries, they don't even have uh, uh, any registries. So they, they don't have a registry they can rely on. So they, uh, what they do when, uh, when they do the election, uh, they register uh, the voters. They are interested in election process. They do an enrollment that can take uh, even a couple of months. And then on a central uh, place, they are processing uh, enrolled people and are doing uh, the duplication. Uh, on the screen, you can see Innovatrix uh, uh, deduplication uh, scenario where an operator can decide whether the person is the same or not. Uh, so we provide, on top of biometric identification, uh, we provide some extra modules which can help you uh, in uh, various use cases. In this case, uh, analyze duplicates so you can easily decide whether it is a duplicate or not. You don't even need a for most of the cases, you don't need a forensic expert, just a standard trained operator, so that you can easily decide whether it is duplicate or not, and uh, prevent uh, issuance of uh, two or more uh, voting cards. So the elections are uh, fair, and uh, you can, uh, you can uh, trust the election process. Uh, the next uh, uh, use case, uh, where uh, ABIS is still uh, quite new, is um, enterprise, uh, enterprise domain. Uh, it started uh, in banking. Uh, so the banks uh, were the first who adopted ABIS to register uh, their, uh, their customers. Uh, originally, they wanted to prevent uh, opening of duplicate accounts, providing uh, duplicate, uh, duplicate loans, and uh, to reduce, uh, to reduce uh, risk. And uh, there are also uh, different use cases. Uh, in some countries, uh, uh, regulatory bodies uh, issued uh, laws 
that, for example, every SIM card uh, holder uh, must be registered. And usually the number of uh, SIM card holder is the same as the number of adult population or even more. So they have to uh, use, uh, they have to use uh, an ABIS to do that. Um, there are another use cases which are not uh, that much about security and they are more about convenience like uh, uh, loyalty programs. And in this scenario you can use, for example, you would like to uh, rent a car. And uh, I really hate when I arrive somewhere and I came to the Hertz uh, uh, car rental booth and there is a long queue and I'm, unfortunately I'm not a VIP customer. Uh, so. I have to wait in a queue, and the, the process itself is pretty slow. But if I have a, a trusted identity, and I'm a part of the loyalty program, I don't even have to be a, a VIP. I can just come to a self-registration terminal. Uh, the system can verify the biometrics uh, of mine, so face or fingerprints, and I can take the car because uh, my identity uh, is uh, verified, and. Uh, that there is a trust between the provider and the customer. Another more traditional use case, uh, we have seen uh, many examples, uh, thanks to Rio, is uh, law enforcement ABIS. This is where it all started. So originally uh, it was AFIS because uh, it was mostly about fingerprints and uh, latent print examiners and uh, tools to analyze fingerprints collected from crime scene and do automated uh, investigation. And thanks to introduction of uh, AFIS, uh, the, the, the process uh, is now taking a second sometimes instead of hours. And the system is at the same time also much more accurate. Um, on the screen you can see Innovatrix uh, uh, latent uh, editor tool where you can just uh, annotate uh, fingerprints collected uh, from crime scene. You can manually adjust the minutia point and search uh, subsequently uh, in ABIS. Uh, of course, uh, there are combined use cases. So it's not only about civil or criminal or enterprise. Uh, very often uh, the systems are combined. So you register your customers. You can do uh, your own register of, uh, for example, if you are a loan provider, you can create your own register, but at the same time, you can use a civil AFIS, uh, which is nationwide, to verify the identity uh, of your customer. Uh, also, also uh, a combination of uh, criminal and civil uh, r register is, uh, is common, uh, but of course, uh, there must be a situation where this is uh, allowed, by uh, local uh, laws, but uh, uh, this, uh, this scenario uh, is applied in a uh, use case in a, that uh, Mr. Faisal has presented and also in Indonesia. How it all started, so the, the company was founded in 2004 and the, the first ABIS version 1 uh, was created in uh, 2007, I think it was for uh, driving license registration because we started with civil uh, AFIS. It was mostly about fingerprint and we have introduced clustering and scalability because that was the first thing uh, when we wanted to manage uh, higher volume. Uh, we have to create a system which is able reliably uh, provide high performance and that can be deployed across multiple servers. Uh, then the version 2 we have introduced uh, that time, a uh, modern interface, which was messaging. And uh, we also provided a high availability because it's almost always a, a must-have requirement of the customer that the system must uh, be operational uh, regardless of the uh, failure of individual hardware component. And in 2011, we were one of the first who, uh, who introduced the web interface. Uh, that time, uh, ABIS market uh, was quite old-fashioned. Uh, the systems uh, were running on the desktops of uh, usually very often police officers, and you have to uh, buy a license uh, for every single station 
uh, where you wanted to uh, use ABs, and they must be connected in a, the same network, and it was quite difficult uh, to deploy, uh, use, and support uh, such a solution in ABs. Uh, thanks to a uh, web interface, uh, we have introduced uh, a very easy way about how ABs can be used uh, if there is uh, an internet or local network access. Uh, there is almost uh, unlimited uh, number of users uh, which can use it just a uh, web browser. Then uh, we have introduced workflows, so we help uh, our customers to process exceptions. So uh, when we register somebody and there is some unexpected situation, like for example, unexpected uh, duplicate, we provide an interface so that the, the trained operator can decide whether it is a duplicate or not, and the system will behave ac accordingly. Then uh, 2016, uh, we have integrated our uh, facial uh, algorithm into our solution, and uh, AFIS became ABIS. So it was, it's not anymore uh, automated fingerprint uh, identification system, but automated biometric uh, identification system. Um, in version 6, uh, we have added uh, Iris. So now we have uh, uh, three most common modalities. Uh, that are usually required by, uh, by, by customers for various uh, use cases. And right now, we have just uh, released version 7, and uh, I would like to talk a little bit uh, more to the details about uh, what's new in version 7. So, uh, the first feature uh, which is on the list is active-active uh, uh, deployment. Uh, very often, uh, especially for um, uh, uh, core uh, national, uh, nationwide systems, uh, there is a primary site and a DR site, usually uh, in a different location, uh, geographically dif different location, so that uh, the DR site can be used usually in case of disaster. Uh, if you have a, a a DR site which is not working actively, then you need uh, two times more servers, and uh, the DR site is just doing nothing, only waiting for a disaster, so it can be uh, started up and used. Uh, we have introduced active-active uh, 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 scenario, where uh, both sites can be uh, working at the same time. Uh, in general, uh, we rely on the database replication, so, uh, it can uh, work with Oracle or, or Microsoft uh, SQL Server, and there is a replication on the database level. The primary uh, ABIS is uh, doing the read-write operation, uh, and the disaster uh, uh, recovery deployment is uh, fetching the data, replicated data from the database, and it can actively provide uh, uh, read-only services. We have designed it this way because usually, uh, in uh, this scenario, the disaster recovery database is also read-only. So if we will make it write-write scenario, uh, the database uh, uh, will not allow it. Another option uh, where we can use this uh, design is uh, also deployment on a single site. And what is it good for? Because uh, imagine that we have a solution like in Indonesia, we have almost 100 servers, and uh, instead of using a cluster of uh, 100 servers, we can use uh, uh, three clusters of uh, 33 servers, which is much more comfortable and uh, much more easy to maintain, much more easy uh, to, if, you, if you have to have a, an outage, for example, because you, you, want to, you want to do some maintenance, you can just switch off one rack, and the system uh, will continue to be operational, and uh, it's actually not a failover scenario. Now, uh, a feature of a completely different kind. Um, in, the, in, in the previous version, we have introduced uh, facial identification, uh, which means that uh, from your system, you can send a request uh, for facial identification, and the system uh, will give you 
the candidates uh, which are matching with uh, the corresponding score. Uh, and, uh, but uh, the whole job uh, you have to do uh, on your side. Uh, with this module, uh, we have uh, uh, introduced in uh, version 7, we provide uh, a simple and easy to use interface uh, where you can just uh, in a very simple way upload the video or set of photos and the system uh, will do the identification. Uh, how does it work? Yeah. You just uh, upload uh, a set of photos uh, in a standard way uh, from your computer. You, you can select uh, which photos you would like to identify and you get a list of, uh, of candidates. So uh, I have three different candidates because I have selected uh, three different people, but of course I can also upload, if I want to improve the accuracy, uh, I can upload the photos of multiple photos of the same person. If I have, for example, the photos from CCTV cameras or uh, a crime scene, and uh, uh, it will automatically increase the accuracy uh, of the system. Uh, in this scenario, uh, where we are also able to process the video. So you can upload the video and the system will automatically uh, extract the facial photos uh, of every person which will appear on the video. Uh, for this uh, use case, uh, we are using our new product which is called uh, uh, SmartFace. Uh, it can be used also uh, separately and uh, in details, uh, this presentation will happen tomorrow, so you are all invited. And uh, this is uh, the guy who will do the actual presentation tomorrow, our product manager. And this screen uh, shows faci facial adjudicator. So if you are not sure uh, whether your hit is a duplicate or not, we provide an extra tool where you can do a detailed analysis of uh, the probe and reference photo. On the left side, you can see that he's even wearing uh, heavy, heavy frame glasses, so he doesn't want to be identified on the CCTV camera. Uh, but we were successful, and uh, that's the standard ICAO photo, and in here we can see the two overlapping images, and this uh, should uh, make the job of uh, expert much easier so that he can confirm whether it is a duplicate uh, or not. The next feature uh, that uh, uh, Rio mentioned uh, in his presentation is uh, palm prints. Actually, why we need palm prints? Um, the, the criminals uh, who are on a crime scene, usually they don't cooperate. They just uh, leave accidentally fingerprints. And sometimes, or very often, there are no fingerprints at all. There are just palm prints. And, uh, we can use them to identify uh, the, the person the same way as we use uh, fingerprints. Uh, uh, we had an algorithm where, which was developed uh, uh, two years ago, and since the version 7, uh, palm prints are integral parts of the solution, so it can be used exactly the same way as uh, fingerprints. So if you are familiar with uh, fingerprints or, or facial matching, the same way you can upload uh, palm prints to ABIS, it's a part of our ABIS applicant record and uh, if can, you can even use uh, adjudicator uh, for matching. Uh, in this scenario we have the latent palm prints on the left and the reference uh, palm print on the right. Uh, maybe uh, it looks uh, to you the same case as, uh, as fingerprints but uh, uh, if you can uh, look here uh, to this uh, number of minutia points, you can see 26 out of 1,735. So uh, this is something completely different. Uh, with uh, fingerprints, usually we have dozens, maximum 150. If you have rolled fingerprints, we can have like 250 fingerprints. But in this uh, scenario, usually we have, uh, we have uh, if, if we take the 
the whole palm print, we can have up to 2,000 of minutia points. So we have to apply a different approach so that we are able to uh, reli reliably uh, identify uh, palm prints. But uh, of course, under the hood, uh, we are using similar algorithm that we use for fingerprints. So it's based on uh, minutia matching. This is very important because if you would like uh, to take this uh, to the court, uh, you have to uh, prove that uh, there are corresponding uh, matching minutia points and not only that the score is uh, this and that. Uh, on top of uh, uh, this, we also provide SDKs, so the palm prints can be uh, uh, processed in our IDKit SDK. But we are not only adding uh, new features, but we are also uh, innovat innovating uh, the core uh, of our ABs, which are our matching algorithm. Uh, with the generation seven, uh, we are able to match uh, uh, fingerprints 30% uh, faster in the version six uh, with the same accuracy. Um, regarding the face matching, uh, we have a 40% lower error rates in this benchmark that we had in the previous version. And uh, iris was also improved by, uh, by 50%. Uh, Jan uh, has already presented uh, our NIST results, so I would like to uh, present it uh, maybe from a different perspective. Uh, what you can see here is uh, NIST, uh, NIST uh, FRBT ongoing uh, results for uh, visa category. Uh, this is just an uh, Innovatrix algorithm. And uh, Rio has mentioned that uh, version 5 did something, and it was somewhere on the list in the middle, and then uh, in a version 6, uh, is what it was already on the top. Uh, so in here, uh, you can see the progress and the evolution of uh, uh, f uh, facial accuracy uh, in the time. So the version 5, July 2017, uh, the error rate uh, was 18%. Then it was around 5 and in November 2018, it was uh, 3%. So um, why this is important? Uh, uh, this is not only about Innovatrix. Uh, usually, uh, all vendors uh, who are uh, trying to get uh, very good results in a, a facial recognition, they have a similar progress. Uh, so the progress in the domain is huge, and it is very important uh, to keep uh, your system up to date if you would like to have a top-notch result in a facial recognition. And uh, there are two aspects uh, why you should uh, work with Innovatrix. One is that uh, uh, with us, uh, we update uh, your system uh, without uh, paying extra license. So unless uh, uh, we have the support program, you will get uh, new algorithms uh, automatically. It's a part of the, of the license. Uh, the, the second thing uh, is that uh, we provide a service uh, which will allow you to upgrade the database uh, easily. And why this is important? Because unlike uh, fingerprints, uh, faces uh, are based on a uh, neural network. And when you would like to update the, the solution, the system, you have to reprocess uh, every single record in the database. Uh, in Indonesia, uh, it means that we have to extract uh, the facial template, uh, which is used for matching, uh, 180 million times. And this is quite a time-consuming process. And uh, it is very important, uh, so th this uh, is uh, uh, done, uh, this can be done in an easy way so that the system uh, can upgrade and be operational uh, at the same time. Uh, the next slide, uh, okay, we would like to be uh, very open and uh, we are comparing the results uh, of Innovatrix and uh, other uh, ABIS competitors here. So you can see that, uh, okay, there are multiple categories on FRVT. 
uh, when you are considering the system, uh, you, you, can, you can compare the results of different vendors. Right now, uh, we are uh, number one uh, in well category from all the vendors. Uh, in Visa category, uh, there, is, uh, there is still a place to improve, but uh, the, the, the results are more or less similar. So that's why it's even more important about how fast you can get the algorithm which was benchmarked to a, to a real production system. As uh, Mr. Faisal has mentioned in this presentation, uh, the results you have if you measure the accuracy are different than those in the benchmarks. This before uh, some company can uh, integrate the new algorithm uh, in days or weeks and some other company can do it in a year or two. So, uh, of course, uh, we, we, we are presenting ourselves, ourselves as an agile company. So, uh, once uh, we submit uh, our algorithm to the benchmark, almost immediately uh, we integrate it to our product and uh, you can get it uh, into your production system. The next topic uh, is also a little bit about, uh, about uh, uh, image processing. And uh, this is not a, a part of our ABIS, uh, but this is a, a tool set uh, that uh, we are using uh, when we do the migration. What you can see on this picture, uh, on the first row, you can see the proper uh, fingerprint uh, images. Um, on the upper right corner, you have NFIQ quality. Hey, here is our uh, 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 presence quality, and here we have the placement. Uh, on the second row, I have enrolled the same fingerprints, but uh, I was not placing uh, my fingerprint correctly. This is a uh, Innovatrix uh, placement code, which is part of the AFIS and also our SDKs. And it allows you to identify the fingerprints, which have a, a proper quality using the standard metrics, but they can be quite useless for the actual matching because they were not captured in a correct way. Uh, so what we did uh, in the past, we have collected some fingerprints which were not uh, placed correctly, and then uh, we compared them with correct, uh, correctly placed fingerprints, and we have developed uh, the method uh, which is able to say uh, whether the fingerprint is placed uh, and captured correctly or not. And thanks to this uh, uh, feature, you can really improve your, the enrollment process and you can definitely improve the resulting accuracy. But uh, what about the cases uh, that we don't know in advance? So uh, what is happening in almost every project uh, we come to the project and there is a legacy database of a couple of millions uh, fingerprints and we don't know anything about those fingerprints. There can be everything. Uh, there are three examples that we have seen in our projects in the past and uh, you can see the, the latent or overlapping fingerprints. So this can happen, for example, if, if uh, the scanner is not cleaned or calibrated properly then uh, you can see the super high uh, WSQ compression and uh, on the right side there is a wet fingerprint. Uh, all three of them are uh, very difficult uh, to match uh, by a standard AB solution. So we have developed a special tool uh, which will allow you to reveal such a cases. Uh, Unlike the placement, uh, we didn't uh, train the system on a specific use case, like incorrect placement, uh, but we have a, a tool which is able to identify uh, anomalies automatically. Uh, how it works? Uh, we just uh, process the fingerprints using our tool, and the system uh, will automatically uh, detect uh, anomalous cases and uh, with the assistance of uh, operator uh, we are able to flag those 
uh, that are interesting for us. So in this scenario, we would like to uh, reveal uh, overlapping fingerprints. So the operator uh, will automatically annotate those fingerprints which are overlapping. Uh, and why this, is, uh, uh, why, why this tool is unique, uh, we are able to save time. Because if we, if we would like to uh, develop a new algorithm for detecting overlapping fingerprints, we will have to annotate thousands, at least thousands of images uh, so that we can train the model which is able uh, to use, uh, to detect overlapping fingerprints. But with this one, uh, I can just annotate uh, uh, maybe 100 fingerprints and uh, the system will be able automatically detect uh, the fingerprints of my interest. In this case, uh, overlapping fingerprints. Uh, at the end of the presentation, uh, I will show you a short demo uh, how, how it uh, actually works. So, what we are planning uh, for 2019, uh, right now, uh, we are already working on uh, integration of our DOT. Uh, DOT is a digital onboarding toolkit. Uh, there will be a detailed presentation of our digital onboarding toolkits tomorrow. You are uh, all invited. Uh, you will see it, uh, uh, how it works. But in general, uh, our DOT tool is able to do uh, enrollment in a simple uh, four steps. We are able to scan the document, do the OCR, then take a selfie, and liveness check. And uh, how it is connected to the AFIS. Uh, so, we have introduced DOT uh, integration module uh, to AFIS. Uh, it will allow you to collect the data that you have enrolled uh, on the mobile device uh, by AFIS. And, uh, of course, you can do some kind of QA check. Uh, so, uh, you have a web-based interface uh, where you can uh, see the confidence of uh, detected uh, uh, field, for example, and uh, the operator can have a look at it and correct it manually or confirm it or completely uh, reject uh, if it's not uh, in appropriate uh, quality. Of course, uh, on top of the QA module, you can use all standard ABS feature like uh, the duplication or uh, workflows. Uh, so, if you would like to do the POC or the demo for the bank, you can combine the two products and uh, you can uh, very easily uh, demonstrate digital onboarding together with uh, ABIS because it's an out-of-the-box solution. Uh, the next feature uh, that we are planning to improve is our biometric search. Uh, I have already presented the first version, and we would like to uh, improve it. So, uh, what is the difference here that uh, we would like not only to search faces, but also uh, fingerprints? Uh, there will be an editor, uh, and not only for uh, fingerprints, where you can use our uh, latent editor, which will be built in, but also uh, facial uh, photo editor. And uh, so we can uh, either enhance the quality of the photo or, for example, uh, make a frontalized photo, which can make uh, the adjudication process uh, uh, more comfortable for the human operator. The next uh, feature uh, that we are planning uh, to launch uh, this year is uh, our case management. So, uh, in this one, uh, we would like to connect uh, together uh, fingerprints and faces into a single case management system. Uh, why this is good for? Uh, we can on organize uh, biometric data uh, which were collected uh, from criminal cases. Uh, it will allow us not only to search uh, against the ABS, but uh, we can also uh, 
group the people uh, who were connected uh, to multiple cases. Uh, this is very important because uh, very often it can help you a lot if you can uh, connect uh, unresolved cases uh, together. And with this module, uh, the system will be able uh, to track criminal cases, connect them together, and also uh, search uh, in ABIS. Of course, uh, we will provide some standard uh, uh, features like uh, enrolling of rolled and palm prints uh, in an appropriate way, and uh, manual adjudication and reporting so that you can uh, print uh, the, 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 the result and use it, for example, for uh, court. Uh, this part uh, will have also a dedicated uh, engine uh, separate uh, from, from ABIS uh, with its own uh, API. So you can decide, uh, for example, what you will do on your site and which features uh, you will uh, use from ABIS. The next one is... Uh, new modality that uh, we plan to introduce, and that's the DNA search. Um, we would like to extend uh, our applicant record with the new modality, which is in DNA, and uh, how this is good for, uh, you can use a single system for all four uh, modalities. Uh, you can uh, uh, use it the same way that you are used to, uh, the same way like uh, uh, right now, uh, you, you are using fingerprints or faces. And uh, why this is good for, uh, of course, you can identify people uh, by DNA. Uh, and you can also uh, identify uh, their blood relatives uh, by the DNA. Uh, and uh, also uh, belonging to the specific uh, group of the population. Uh, we do not... Uh, plan to provide the tools uh, for DNA extraction, but there are plenty of existing solutions on the market, uh, so we can uh, use the existing solution for uh, DNA extraction, and then uh, enroll DNA uh, to ABIS and use it uh, for, for identification. 